Hey YouTube, welcome to another Valkyrie Connect video. My name is Hakeo and this is part two of the Beginner's Guide. Today I'll be going over orbing and promotion and what stats they'll be affecting. First I'll be going over orbing and which stats they affect as well as which quest you should choose whether you should get the one with the cheaper stamina or the one that costs you more stamina. Then I'll be going over promotion for a hero, how do you promote, what stats they affect overall, and why do players prefer to orb over promoting a hero. Alright, let's get started. I'll be using a Yasviel for my example and I'll be orbing her from 0 orbs to purple 1. As you can see, she currently has 0% across the board in her stat sheet for orbs. And then we'll be seeing how each individual orbs affect her stats along the way. As you can see, each of her orbs currently has a plus sign on the upper left hand box of it. It means that I own that orb currently and I can set that as her orbs and each time that I set her orbs, you can see a percentage value next to a stat value being increased. Alright, I wanted to show you guys the datasheet before I upgrade to show that the percentage value gained is implemented onto the character's datasheet before you actually upgrade. So what does upgrading actually do? Well, it does a few things. First, it allows you to climb to the next tier, going from green to blue to purple. And as you climb each tier, it allows you to unlock another equipment slot. Another thing that it does is that it increases your base stats by a little bit, and it allows you to unlock more orbs to increase the percentage value of your character. As you can see, when I upgraded, the orbs value percentage did not change, it's just the base value. For the values to change from the orbs, you have to reorb the character. The next thing that I want to cover is questing. Sometimes when you're orbing, you'll come across an instance where you currently don't own that orb, and to get that orb, you'll have to quest for it. When selecting a quest for the specific orb that you're looking for, you'll notice that the system sometimes gives you multiple quests, ranging from a chapter that's early in the game to the latest chapter that you currently have unlocked. Generally, the uppermost quest is the cheapest quest, and the lowermost quest is the most expensive quest when speaking about stamina. It will make sense for players to want to use the cheapest value in terms of stamina for their orbs, but there's one thing I've noticed, I've ran multiple tests for it, but in the end, you're still at the mercy of RNG. But just keep in mind that when you are looking for your specific orb, the leftmost orb is the rarest one of that current quest. The rightmost orb is the most common one of the current quest. Keep that in mind next time you're questing for a specific orb. Even though the earlier quest generally means that it's cheaper for your stamina, it doesn't mean that you'll be spending less stamina overall. There are two things that I factor in when questing for a specific orb. One being if it's a rare orb, meaning that it's further to the left, or a common orb, meaning is further to the right. Now, if each of the quests that it offers you, both quests shows that the orb is to the left, meaning it's the rarest, check which one has a lesser pool of orbs that's available. Example, if the earlier quest shows that there are five different orbs that you can get, and the orb that you want is the leftmost orb, then it means that your chances are pretty low to get that orb, versus the later quest where, even though it's still the leftmost orb, there are only about two or three orbs in the pool of availability. Just remember that in the end, you'll be at the mercy of RNG, and you could be spending more stamina on a quest that states that it's a common orb, versus one that says it's a rare orb. Before I jump onto the next topic, I wanted to show you a purple one in Yasvio. You'll see that the base stats has increased, and the orb percentages increased along with the upgrades. The next thing I want to talk about is promoting a hero and how it affects your base stats overall. You'll notice that when upgrading your hero via promotion, that the orb percentages does not change, but the base stats changes drastically. Why do players prefer to orb over promoting a hero? Well, if you've noticed, even though promoting a hero increases your base stats by a huge margin, it's not percentage base. When you're figuring out how orbs affect your overall stats, it's the base stat plus the gear stat multiplied by the percentage of the orbs that, that you're figuring out. 
For example, if you look at the screen, you'll notice that Luga has 16,172 for base style and HP, 28,315 for her gear. If I combine those two numbers and multiply it by 110%, they'll come out to be 62,276. Another thing that I want to point out is the difficulty of obtaining a hero's soul shard versus getting a gear piece and just feeding it trash loot so that you can upgrade its stats. You'll either have to farm the souls by spending stamina or you'll have to spend diamonds to get those souls or mana versus getting a gear piece where you'll pretty much just be feeding it mana trash loot and upgrading it that way. Overall, it's easier to increase your stats via orbing than upgrading a hero by promoting. If you look at upgrading a hero through promoting, you can see that it spikes up in stats. And if you upgrade a hero in orbing, it's a consistent curve where it doesn't increase by that much on its own. But with the supplement of your base stat as well as your gear stat, you'll see a larger increase. With that in mind, I didn't want anyone to think that I'm discounting promoting a hero, but I want to show everyone that orbing a hero, even though you have them at 3 star, 4 star, they can still be very valuable to your team. You don't have to not put in a hero on your team just because you see that it's 3 star. If you orb them all the way to purple 2, 3, they can be just as powerful as a 4 star with just purple 1 orbing. The last thing that I want to go over is check the trade vendor often. There's generally really good orbs there that you can get, and the traveler's merchant usually has some great purple orbs that you can purchase for mana. And with that, I want to let everyone know that there is a Valkyrie Connect Discord as well as a Valkyrie Connect Reddit. I'll leave both the links in the description below. I understand that this guy was pretty short. If I didn't answer all of your questions, please leave a question or suggestion in the comment section below and I'll get to you as soon as I can. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you would like to see more content like this. And follow me on Twitter if you would like to see Valkyrie Connect news on the Japanese client side. And just to see what I've been up to in the game. Until the next video guys, take care.